to excel today with Pastor Afwaka, a weekly broadcast to equip and empower you for all-round excellence in life. Stay tuned and be blessed with this life-transforming teaching. God bless you for being part of today's broadcast. Hello and welcome to Excel Today. I'm Pastor Afwaka and I'm glad that you made time to be with us on today's broadcast. I have no doubt that God is going to speak to you and you are going to be enriched by the power of God's word. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege of fellowship in your word. The Bible says, Thy words were found, I did eat them, and it was unto me joy and rejoicing of my heart. Today, as we fellowship and we feast, we feast on your word. We ask the Lord, you will cause the joy that your word brings to overwhelm our lives, enrich our lives by your wisdom, and position us to live a life that you have ordained for us in Christ, a life of all-round excellence. We give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' much less name. Amen and amen. I want to encourage you to share the link with as many people as possible. Let them be blessed by the ministry of God's word. Well, our text that we've been running with for quite some time now is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. It says, The path of the just is like a shining sun, that shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. And then, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, he says, We all with open face, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So in God's mind and God's perfect will, concerning your life is that your life should be changing from glory to glory that's what we call a better you and we are looking at the series a better me a better me because god wants you to be better and you want to be better and i want you to be better presently we are looking at make better decisions if you are going to be a better person in life there are certain steps you need to take in christ you have a destination to be better in Christ, your sins are forgiven. In Christ, God is your Father. In Christ, the riches of your inheritance in Christ are awesome. So, you most certainly have a glorious destiny. I like it when the psalmist says, The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. Yes, you do have a good heritage in Christ. And how do you walk in the reality of the same? How do you manifest that heritage? Those are some of the things I'm sharing with you practically from this teaching so we are saying that if you are going to be better one you have to have a vision to be better you have to form better habits and number three you have to learn to make better decisions our text is first kings 18 21 and elijah went to the people and said how much longer will it take to make up your minds how much longer will it take to make up your minds that's what decision is about it's about making up your mind and then acting on what you have decided on or what you have made up your mind on. If the Lord is God, worship him. He challenged them. But if Bar is God, worship him. But the people didn't say a word. You have to understand that you have to make a choice. Failure to make a choice is a choice in itself. You were made in the image of God with the capacity to make decisions and to make choices. And the first step in exercising your power of choice or the power to choose is in a decision. Once you decide, you have made a choice between one or two options. And that's what decision is about. So it's critical. One thing you would always be required to do in life is to make a decision. Life is all about decisions. Some are grave. Some are not so grave. Some are <laughs> can can change the entire trajectory of your life others are quite simple some need careful and strategic thinking others are just straightforward and so whichever way it goes decisions are vital because decisions matter as far as our destinies and our lives on earth are concerned and even our relationship with god the bible says a double-minded person is unstable in all his ways let no such person think he can receive anything from God. So when you are indecisive, when you are always halted between, halting between two opinions, should I go left, should I go right? Should I marry this one? Should I let go of this one? All of that. When you live your life perpetually in that state, you are not able to make progress with your life. You are not able to live a fulfilling life. You are not able to fulfill God's plan and purpose for your life. 
That's why it's important that you learn practically from God's word how to make wise or better decisions. I realized this week that even God is not particularly excited about indecisive people. So it, 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 it is a very wrong place to belong to. Can you imagine driving behind someone and the person is showing uh, is not showing any trapgator, but he's just in the middle of the road. He's, he's instead of keeping to his lane, you, you are not sure. You can't, you, you don't know which way to go. It's very difficult running or driving behind such a person. Or somebody who is driving, he shows the trapgator to the left in a few minutes and then he changes it to the right. Then he comes back to the left and he comes back. That is how a person who is indecisive is like. And when you are moving, you are in a family, you have a husband who is indecisive, you are in a church, you have a pastor who is indecisive, you have, I mean, in your own life, if you are going, you are always halting between opinions. You are not able to make up your mind. It can really affect your progress and your success in life. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, Listen to how God reacts and responds to indecisive people. Concerning the church of Laodicea, he said, I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Can you imagine that God can work with you if you are indecisive? You need to learn to be decisive, take decisions, and then live by your convictions. And so it's important we learn how to make decisions. We said decisions affect the quality of our lives. Decisions have consequences. Decisions are irreversible. Some are reversible, others are not. And Satan can frustrate God's plans and purpose for your life by virtue of the decisions he can provoke you to make. And then, of course, we said your ultimate destiny in life will be defined and shaped by your decisions. Where you end in life, a success, a failure, a financial prosperity or poverty, a, a, a happy home or a home with full of troubles. It's all a function of your decisions. I shared with you that better decisions are usually not popular. Better decisions can be painful, but better decisions are always, 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 and I mean always, profitable. It may not be so in the immediate, in, in the immediate or short term, but in the long term, you can be sure that the decision you made have given you some advantage or some better results in life. And so last week, we got to the point where we read about uh, Rohoboam, and we need to read that again as we set the stage to understand how to make better decisions. Rohoboam went to Shechem, that is uh, 1 Kings 12, and all Israel had gathered to make him king. And when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, heard of this, he returned from Egypt, for he had fled to Egypt to escape from King Solomon. The leaders of Israel summoned him. And Jeroboam and the whole assembly of Israel went to speak with Rehoboam. Your father was a hard master, they said, lighting the harsh labor demands and heavy taxes your father imposed on us. Then we will be your loyal subjects. Rehoboam replied, give me three days to think this over. Then come back for an answer. So the people went away. Then the king discussed the matter with older men who had counseled his father, Solomon. What is your advice? He asked. How should I answer these people? The older counselors replied, If you are willing to be a servant to these people today and give them a favorable answer, they will always be your loyal subject. That word is key. They will always be your loyal subject. They gave him a condition. You have a decision to make. If you make the decision well, this will be the outcome. They didn't, however, tell him the negative side, but they just told him that, listen, if you make the decision this way, you are going to have a positive outcome. And the outcome is that uh, regardless of the prophecy that had gone ahead in 1 Kings chapter 11, this could turn the, the situation in your favor. They will become your loyal subjects. But Roboam rejected the advice. That's a, <laughs> he rejected the advice of the older men and instead asked the opinion of the young men who had grown up with him. And were now his advices. What's your advice? He asked them, how should I answer these people who want 
me to lighten the burdens imposed by my father. The young men reply, this is what you should tell those complainers who want a lighter burden. My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. Yes, my father laid heavy burdens on you, but I'm going to make them even heavier. My father beat you with whips, but I will beat you with scorpions. <laughs> Amazing. Three days later, Jeroboam and all the people returned to hear Rohoboam's decision. Look at that. Rohoboam's decision. Just as the king had ordered. But Rohoboam spoke harshly to the people, for he rejected the advice of the older counselors and followed the counsel of his younger advisors. He told the people, My father laid heavy burdens on you, but I'm going to make them even heavier. My father beat you with whips, but I will beat you with scorpions. So the king paid no attention to the people. This turn of event was the will of God, for it fulfilled the Lord's message to Jeroboam, son of Nebat, through the prophet Ahijah from Shiloh. When all Israel realized that the king had refused to listen to them, they responded down with the dynasty of David. We have no interest in the son of Jesse. Back to your homes, O Israel. Look out for your own house, O David. So the people of Israel returned home. But Roboam continued to rule over the Israelites who live in the towns of Judah. Amazing. It's a long reading, but it's an important reading because it's out of this passage we are going to glean lessons on how to make better decisions. This guy, Roboam, had an opportunity to make a decision and he started out well. But eventually, along the line, some things went wrong and he missed it. But even in his mistake, we can learn how to make better decisions from his story because there are vital lessons there. Sometimes you learn how, not, how to do good things by looking at people and watching how they have gone on a wrong course. So it's, it's important that we look at his life. This man made a decision. How did he make the decision? It's interesting. He started so well. They came to him with a request. And then he said, listen, you guys, give me some time. And that is very good. We'll come to look at that later. When you are making a decision, you need to be patient, particularly if it's a life-defining decision. You don't want to rush it. He said, give me some time and then I will come back to you. Though sometimes some people drag their feet for a long time. We'll look at that as well. Because sometimes the longer you take to make up your mind about a matter, the slimmer your opportunities become. And so it's important that you also know. But whichever way it goes, you need to be patient. Patiently work out all the things you need to find out, all the details you need to find out before you go ahead to make the decision. But let's look at this man. They come to him and then the first thing they ask is to ask for time which I will address later. But then he called for the elders who used to be his father's counselors. Why will he call for them? I believe he called for them because he wanted to get some, uh, uh, he, he understood his limitations. So the first thing we want to uh, look at when we are making decisions is to understand our personal limitations. You're about to make a decision, a financial decision, a decision to be married, a decision to, what are your limitations? What are your limitations? You want to marry this year. You have vowed. You are praying. You want to marry this year. Look at yourself. Do you have a job? Do you, do you have the character for marriage? Do you know how to manage a home as a young woman? It's not just about I love you, I love you. Do you have what it takes to really settle with the man? Do you have the character, the meekness of character to stay at home with the man? Do you know how to uh, manage your own life? So understand your limitations. Understanding your limitations is very key. This guy was the king. But imagine, the king has a decision to make and he calls some other people out far older than him. What he's simply saying is that I'm the king, but I'm limited in some way. You always have to understand that in life, you don't know it all. You will never have every kind of experience in life and you don't have all the abilities in life. You may be a lawyer, but you are not a, a, a car mechanic. You may be a doctor. You are also not a carpenter. So you are limited in some way. Your competences, your abilities are limited. Not only are you limited in your competences and your abilities. For instance, I'm a pastor. If I have to make a legal decision, it is wisdom that I understand I am limited because I don't know all the intricacies of, uh, of the law. 
wait over if i'm getting into business i need to understand uh, my own limitations and so that limitation will necessarily help me to know how to move on from there but if you don't understand or you don't appreciate your own limitations you will just uh, be leading your life astray so you need to understand how am i limited what are the areas i'm um, limited i said you are limited in your competencies and your abilities you're also limited in your knowledge the bible says something in the book of first corinthians 13 verse 9 he said for we know in part and we prophesy in part there is nobody who has full knowledge there are always blind spots when you are driving there are blind spots so you you always need to be guided you can't just show your trap gator and just move into a lane no you need to show your trap gator and then watch and see that there is nobody within that blind spot and so i, I like the the modern cars that have uh, uh, device ways and strategies to even deal with blind spots such so that when you are driving the vehicle the moment you you make an attempt to overtake if there's somebody in your blind spot you see that there will be a light blinking or you have some kind of a noise a uh, sound feedback to let you know that listen it's a wrong step to take and when you are making a decision and you understand your limitations you are able to identify the blind spots and then in that blind spot you go on to the next step of getting the things you need to get so understand your limitations when you are making decisions understand that you are limited you have never been married before so if you are considering marriage you are limited your experiences you are limited in your knowledge you are limited in your competencies you are limited because of that you always first and foremost consider all your limitations i want to start a business i want to resign my job and start a business sit down understand your limitations if you resign from your job now and this job you want to this business you want to start if you start have you considered all the things that come with it the limitations that come with it your weaknesses as far as those are concerned understand that then number two of course once you understand your limitations you want to get information so get all the information i believe that he did not just call them because he understood his limitation but he also called them because information was one key way to overcome some of his limitations he called them these were people who had counseled his father before so they knew things he didn't know they they had information he could access and that could be a blessing or it could make a positive impact on the decision he was making you want to marry you have not gotten any information on marriage you've not read any book on marriage you've not spoken to anybody whose marriage is a model you would like to pattern your future marriage after and then all oh, you know we are in love uh, i have gotten a beloved i have this in you you end up frustrating your life and destiny because it doesn't work like that you need knowledge the bible said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge so it's key the bible says in proverbs chapter 13 verse 16 i love this scripture he says, every prudent man deals with knowledge, but the self-confident fool exposes and flans his folly. Every prudent man, the word prudent is a wise man. When you are wise, you don't act of emotions. This is, oh, pastor, you don't know the gentleman. I feel so good. I feel we are in love. I feel we are compatible. I feel that all things are going to work. Listen, you don't marry with feelings, oh after some season the feelings go die and when they die your eyes will be clear you have to understand that you need knowledge do you know this guy who knows this guy apart from you that he, you met uh, probably introduced yourself or something who else knows him better than you do have you met some of his classmates what's your view of him do you know where he goes to church do you know his pastor do you know the role he plays in church find out don't be in a hurry to fall in love i always tell young ladies if you learn to fall in your love even fall in love from your head first your heart can never be broken but unfortunately most young women when they meet the dream guy the dream lover whichever <laughs> they, they they just get excited and they are all over they don't have the time and the patience to make all the necessary inquiries they need to inquiries they need to make they are just in love and their heart is beating 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 you will end up breaking the heart if you enter any love relationship with your head 
your heart cannot easily be broken. Your head is where you process things. Your head is where you, you, you learn to gather all the things you need to gather. Again, look at Proverbs chapter 31, verse 16. An interesting thing the Bible says about the virtuous woman. He says, she goes to inspect a field and buys it. With the earnings, she plants a vineyard. Look, I like the, the, the word that he go, she goes to inspect a field and buys it. That's knowledge. She goes to inspect the field. You don't pay for a field before you, you, you go and inspect it. And we have an incident like that in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 14, verse 16 to 19. It's an interesting episode there. You know, when a, a, a man threw a great feast and invited a number of people. And when he invited them, there were people who began to make excuses. And it's interesting the excuses they made. A certain man gave a great supper and invited many. And sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said, I bought a piece of land and I must go and, and, and see it. Can you imagine that? You bought a piece of land and you are going to see it. How can you fall in love with the man before you get to know whether he's born again or not? Whether he speaks in tongues or not? Whether he's a committed member in a local church or not? Say, I, I just love him. That is putting your emotions ahead of your head. And that guarantees failure in the end. How can you put money in an investment you've not taken time to learn about? How can you decide that you are just moving to a place and you have no idea about the place? It's always, always, always important that you get knowledge. Get knowledge. Get knowledge. And knowledge can be assessed. It can be assessed through people. It can be assessed through books. It can be assessed in many ways. Never, 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 never downplay the value of knowledge. No. You need to know people. As much as possible, knowledge, like I said, knowledge can be assessed through people. It can be assessed through books. And it can also be assessed through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can give you revelation. The Holy Spirit can give you access to information you didn't have before. The Bible says, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. And most of the time, unfortunately, when most people say the Holy Spirit is leading them on, they end up being led by their emotions. Because if the Holy Spirit truly leads you, you will end up in peace. The Bible said, for the Lord will speak to his people, he shall speak peace unto his people. So it's key. Knowledge is critical. Don't buy a field before you inspect it. Inspect the field before you buy it. Get all the things you need to know. Find out all the things you need to find out before you allow your heart to go there. Before you put your money there. Before you decide that you are going to uh, uh, commit to that relationship it's so so critical and then of course number three is the fact that we need to seek wise counsel and you see all of these are a follow-up to your understanding the understanding of your own limitations because when you understand your limitations then you know what you need to know oh i don't know so much about this guy i need to find out uh, I've not been on this road before. I have never been married before. I have never entered business before. No, that's a limitation. I think I need to sit down, get some books and read, get some those who have started up some small business and find out how they are keeping it going. That's how you do it. And then you go a step further in your quest for information. This is not just information. This is experience information. There are things we read, there are things people have experienced and they can share it with you. And when they share it with you, they are as good as your own experience. That is getting knowledge from people without necessarily going through the pain they went through to learn the lesson. That's what experience teaches you. Experience gives you wisdom, which you didn't have to pay the price of pain for. That is when you learn from other people's experience, that's what you are doing. You are benefiting from wisdom you didn't have to go through pain to acquire. There are two ways, Mike Medock says, that everybody learns wisdom. You are going to learn wisdom either through mentorship or through mistakes. And if you learn wisdom through mistakes, you are going to go through pains. You remember the prodigal son? 
he, he went so bad and then came back to himself. And then you can also stay at the feet of people who have more experience, who have more insight, who have more knowledge than you do. And then they pass on their experiences to you without their pain. I think that is a better option. And we are going to take off and continue from here next week. I trust that this broadcast has been a blessing to you. And we look forward to having you join us same time next week. If you are not committed to any local church and you are in Kumasi, I invite you to join any of our branches in Kumasi. If you are in Accra, you can also visit our church at Adenta or find any good local church close to you and make sure that you are committed to God. The Lord bless you and I look forward to having a great time with you same time next week. Till I come your way, remain blessed and enjoy God's uh, maximize the grace of God. I encourage you to also partner with us so that we can together take the gospel to the nations and be a blessing to many more lives. Presently, we are on radio, and God would have us extend it to other stations, other regions. We want you to partner with us, and let's take the gospel to the ends of the earth. God bless you as you make a quality decision to partner with us in this effort. Till I see you same time next week, uh, maximize the grace of God and remain blessed. It's great having you to be part of today's broadcast. Join us same time next week Saturday on the same channel for another insightful moment on Excel Today with Pastor Afwafa. You are gladly invited to fellowship with the Embassy of Life Chapel family for our good news services on Sunday across our respective branches for a life-changing experience. You can also be part of the service online on this same channel. Remain blessed and have a grace-filled day.